All-State Sports Link's third down chirp is delivered by Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza. Visit PapaJohns.com today for more info. To be at your best when the lights are brightest, well, that's a hard thing to do. Because lights expose weakness. And the nation is watching. With three games left, it's time to make a move. Time to have that week you've been waiting for. And to do it under the lights, in prime time, well, that's more than a win. That's a nationwide release starring Remember Me. That's what the lights do. They present the opportunity to shine. It's a prime time football game for the Ball State Cardinals Wednesday night, which means it's a prime time episode of Third Down Chirp delivered by Papa John's. Hello, everybody. I'm your host, Luke Martin, alongside Zach Hughes, Tyler Bradfield. As you can see, we are donning the Cardinal in white today. It is a red out at Schumann Stadium Wednesday night. And guys, I missed you last week. It's been a bye. It's been a while. I'm excited to talk Ball State football again. Well, it's been a while, and it's been a while since they played in Schumann Stadium, so it's going to be nice to be out there again on Wednesday night. But the win against Akron, it, it really was to balance attack offensively and defensively for Ball State. And we've seen them do this before, Tyler, jump out to a huge lead like they did in the first half. And they did that against Ak Akron, but they did that against North Texas as well. So the Akron game, they jump out 14-3 to and then 28-10 to at half. It was good to see them put together that second half as well and get the big win on the road against the MAC team. And it was a nice win at Akron. They continue to win, and they continue to stay flawless in Mid-American Conference right now, unbeaten atop the MAC West. This team right now is looking very sharp and very good. Now they got to come into a, a game against Central Michigan. But, you know, I did miss you guys. I missed you, Zach, uh, during the bye week. Luke, I missed you as well, but it's got to be back on set. It is great to be back on set. And in case you forgot about the Akron game, let's relive that Akron game and rehash all of the great plays that happened that windy Saturday in Akron, Ohio, with our Sounds of the Game segment as we listen to Tyler Bradfield's radio play-by-play -play calls from 91.3 WCRD, Ball State. Sports Link Radio. Good afternoon on a cold and windy Saturday from InfoCision Stadium in Akron, Ohio, as the Ball State Cardinals will look to stay atop the Mid American Conference and improve to 8 and 1 on the season. Snap the pull. Four receivers in the pattern. Pull will be brought down. Nick Ollie, or excuse me, Nick Miles came around the end and dropped pull in the backfield. Robert Stein for a 51-yard field goal with the left foot. The wind is at his back, and he splits the upright. He's outstretched in front of him, takes the snap, drops the pass. Flag fly in. It's Sneed into the end zone. A one hand by Willie Sneed. Are you kidding me? They're on flags down to the play, but I think the touchdown will stand. Trips near side, one split wide to the left for Akron. A handoff to Chisholm, gaping hold of the 40. Midfield 45 of Ball State. Open grab to the 30, and he is going to take it all the way to the house. 10 5 touchdown, Akron. Snap pulls away, hands off to Edwards to the 5. Edwards pushes the pile. Edwards leans in. His helmet is in, but is the football. He stretches forward, and the official signals touchdown, Ball State. Snap to winning. He'll throw to the end zone, into the corner. It's Smith. He brought it in. Touchdown, Ball State. 
Snaps away to pole. To pole. He drops to his own 50 to throw. He's going to throw to the end zone, and it is up in the air and intercepted. Ryan Jones brought it down for an interception for the Ball State Cardinals. No, that was Tyree Holder, a 5'11 redshirt freshman out of Florida. It's intercepted, and the Ball State Cardinals will win this one. 42 to 24. They improve 8 and 1 on the season and stay unbeaten in the Mid American Conference. Ball State wins their 14th game out of the last 15 regular season contests. The Akron win also is Ball State's 10th straight MAC win, which means the Cardinal team this year is only two wins behind the school record of 12 straight MAC conference wins. Keith Winning also matched his career high in touchdown passes for a single game with five, even though he didn't get 300 yards passing. Here was head coach Pete Limbo after the game as he thought his team improved. He also chimed in on Jeffrey Garrett continuing his strong play and what the extra couple days do in preparation for the Chippewas. Film, I think we did respond to some adversity. Every time Akron got it a little closer, it seemed like we were able to, to pull away again, and it sort of ended up playing out about how we thought it would. He's practicing better. You know, we had a long heart-to-heart -heart after last season, and I just flat out told him I didn't think he was playing to his potential. He took it to heart. I think he's responded well to Shannon Morrison taking over in the secondary, and uh, Jeff is having an all-conference type year right now. Well, it's really only a couple extra days. You know, it's like having 10 days instead of seven. So we'll get a little extra rest. We'll get a little extra work in, and uh, we've got a good Central Michigan team coming to town. We just heard Coach Limbo say he thought his team responded to adversity and played well in Akron, Ohio. So now it's time to go through our opening drive with our three main headlines. Zach, let's start with you. What impressed you about the Ball State win in Akron, Ohio? Well, not just that, that they're winning. They're winning consistently. But at this point in the season, to me, Luke, Luke and Tyler, it, it's just survive and advance. It seems kind of like the NCAA tournament. We just want to get to that NIU game. They have one more to get through. You have an under 500 central team coming in. You need to dominate, get some votes, maybe make it up into the top 30. They're 34th in the nation right now, and get that showdown in DeKalb that we've all been waiting for. Well, the biggest thing that stood out to me, Zach, was the duo and the wide receivers of Jordan Williams and Willie Steen. They've been outstanding this year. And against Akron, they combined for over 100 yards apiece. They were phenomenal. 100 yards for Willie Steen, 124 yards, a career high for Jordan Williams. That's three times this year that those three have combined for over 100 yards apiece in the same game. Respectively, Willie Steen third in the nation, Jordan Williams 18th in the nation in receiving yards. Is there a more underrated receiving duo in the country, I don't think so. So what stuff to me was that duo and wide receiver and Williams and Snead. For me, the main thing is Ball State staying focused. I mean, Zach Hughes just talked about it. Everyone's focusing on DeKalb next Wednesday, but Coach Limbo and his staff, the players and the staff have done a great job focusing on each opponent. Akron was a solid team. Their record may have not have shown that, but Ball State treated them like they were a big time opponent. And this Wednesday night, they are near 20 point favorites over the Chippewas. Everybody expects them to go out on national TV and beat them by 40 points, but Ball State doesn't believe this is just going to be a cakewalk. They understand that this is going to be a tough test, always going to be a tough test, and that is why the Cardinals are going to do a strong job. And you look at Wednesday night, they are staying focused on the task at hand because that's not always easy when everyone's focusing on a big time matchup with a top 25 opponent. Well, one guy that has been extremely reliable for Keith winning has been Zane Fakes. But Zane Fakes also, he's getting a battle from the guy behind him, and that is Dylan Curry, as he always steps up out on that Schumann Stadium turf and plays so well. Well, this time we get to know Dylan Curry off the field with our Papa John's Slice of Life segment. My name is Dylan Curry from Frankfort, Kentucky, tight end, redshirt sophomore. My dad, uh, he got me into it. He played football in high school, and uh, he just he kind of got me and my brother into it. And he was our always our coach growing up and stuff. So he kind of kept us into it in that sense, and just kind of went from there. The love of the game just took over from there, and just carried on to now. 
Probably my favorite moment playing, getting to play two years of high school with my brother and my younger brother. It was pretty special. We had two special years, my junior and senior year in high school, and to get to share that with him was pretty good. So, and, and my dad was also a coach, so kind of just family, family matter, and so it made it pretty special. Zane's a good guy. He's one of my best friends on the team, and I mean, he's helpful in any way, inside of football or outside of football, anything that I need or anything, he's there to help. And the younger guys, and with me playing last year, I'm kind of the next guy in line of older guys, and me and Zane kind of helping the younger guys. It's, it's pretty neat to see like those guys like following us and doing things. And uh, Zane's pretty much laid the path of how the tight end should be played here at Ball State, so he's helped a lot in that way. The neat part about Dylan's story, guys, to me was how Zane Fakes is such a mentor to them. And Zane, being that senior leader, he's not going to be here next year. And hopefully guys like Sam Bruner, Dylan Curry will step up and make big time plays for the Cardinals. But hey, are you ready for the fans to have the spotlight? <laughs> it's time for the fans to have that spotlight yet again for our famous fan Q&A. People are loving it the past couple of weeks, so we're going to continue it as Cardinal Nation had a few questions on their mind for some of their favorite Ball State players. This question's for Jordan Williams. Which wide receiver would go out trick-or-treating and eat all their candy that same night? Uh, I think it would be Jamil, because <laughs> Jamil, he, he, has his, uh, he has his kid moments, and uh, he's, he has some at-heart kid moments, like for real. And uh, he, he was talking about it earlier, just about how he wants some candy and stuff. So, My question's for Nick Miles. Uh, I know you have your pre-game rituals, but what is your pre-game ritual before a big test? Sometimes when I take a test, I start off with the last 10 questions, and then I, then I go to the first 10, and then I go to the second to last 10. It's kind of weird. I don't know why I do that. I just feel like the test goes by faster, so that's the way I take tests. Every Division I college football player, and even for basketball, but it's football on this show, goes through a pregame walkthrough, a coach's walkthrough, where they give you the game plan on how to perform on game day. Well, now it's time to go through a third down chirp coaches walk through as we look how the Cardinals do on game day on offense and defense. But first, let's check in with offensive coordinator Rich Skrosky as he gives us a breakdown on a very basic Ball State offensive play. All right, folks, this is a, a basic play in the Ball State offense. It's one we pretty much use every uh, pretty much every game. We might use it in little different forms at times, but it's pretty uh, much a basic concept, and a lot of teams have it. It's one of our uh, quick game principles, and uh, if you could imagine this, and I'll, I'll try to even give you what the people might be. Um, this is usually Willie Sneed out here. This is Jameel Smith in here. Uh, this might be Jordan Williams, and then this would be Zane Fakes. Obviously, the quarterback is Keith Wenning. You know, most of the time it's out of the shotgun, and we're in a one-back set, okay? To the wide side of the field, what we do is we run two slant routes. Uh, Jameel's running that inside slant route because his matchup sometimes is on a linebacker or a nickel back or sometimes a safety. And then Willie's matchup is on a cornerback. So usually the defense looks something like that when uh you know in a standard defense and then on the on the weak side of the formation uh jordan would run what we call a hitch route which is about a five yard route that comes to a stop if this corner were to threaten him a little bit more jordan might go ahead and do that and then zane fakes just has a little out cutting route uh the quarterback looks at it basically this if there's more and i, I hate to sound so simple but it is this simple if there's more space on the slant side where Willie and Jameel are, he'll throw the slant, kind of looking from Jameel and then out to Willie. If there's less space out there because the linebackers have slid that way, then he might work this way. And he pretty much looks from uh, Jordan and then he comes back into Zane Fakes. The running back is really a protector on it. He'll get out if his guy doesn't blitz and we want to make an accurate throw. So it's kind of a half field read, but we might be able to throw it both ways. Okay, and here's a look at it on film. This is in a game against Kent State. You can see that uh, Kent State has, in, in the weak side of the formation of Jordan, they've kind of rolled the coverage that way with the corner kind of squatting down on, on Jordan with kind of a, a high safety and then a linebacker playing on top of Zane. So what Keith does is he ends up going to the wide side of the field. Uh, we seem like we have a little bit more space up here because of the location of the Sam and the safety. 
and it kind of creates an isolation for Willie. And, uh, you know, we're, we're fortunate that we have these uh, really talented receivers. And usually if Willie's in a one-on-one -on -one situation, uh, he'll be able to separate on this slant route. Keith does a good job of getting his feet turned that way. And then obviously it's an accurate throw and catch. And, you know, it's a solid gain of about seven or eight yards. Now we know why the Cardinals are so successful on offense. Now we can sit there and say, hey, we know what Coach Skrowski's doing. We know what play call he's calling. Well, everyone loves the, the Ball State offense because they're so dynamic. But, Luke, you know I played defense in high school, so I love the defense. And you can't be sitting at 8-1 without a good defense. So Coach Bateman also, also had some good, good words of advice for us. I was getting to Coach Bateman. Could you not wait a little bit? We're going to Coach Bateman next in the show. Zach Hughes basically already tossed it to him, but I'll toss it to Coach Bateman. The Ball State defense is playing very well right now, and Coach Bateman allowed some insight on us on why the Ball State defense is having so much success. All right, so this is in the third quarter against Akron. It's 28-17. It's third and eight. And this is right after we had just given them the touchdown in the second in the third quarter. And so we needed to stop here. We ran this blitz once already, so we kind of had a little tweak off of it. So what we're gonna do, this is really what we call star. All right, star personnel means the nickels in the game and the Sams in the game at will linebacker. So it's almost like a, like, a, like two nickel backs in the game, okay? And then Ben Engel, our normal will linebacker, he slides over and plays Mike. All right, and what we're trying to do right now, you see Ben is, is walked up. We're trying to show them a five across, and this looks like we're in cover two. And then here, we had shown this look against Toledo, all right, where we had a twist with the mic and, the, and, the, and Nate Ollie used the backside three technique. We're going to come down and play what we call cover one, all right, which is man coverage here, man coverage here, right, man coverage here, man coverage here. Brian Jones will become a deep high safety, all right. Ben is going to try and mess around in here to keep the, what we call the slide, which means we're trying to keep the old lineman working towards him. Right, and the guy we thought would come free is the guy that comes free right here is John Newsom, our rush end. All right, we thought they would slide to protection and put the center on John as he twists. All right, so we get two guys on Kenny. All right, what happens is when that happens, they get the center on John. And that's not a great matchup for him. So John's able to slip it, and then we get a great rush by Nick. All right, we see pretty good coverage here in the secondary, too. There's nobody really open. You know, we knew third and eight they were going to be what we call stick stick routes, which means they're going to run to the, to the down marker and try and get open. We thought we'd get there in time where the ball couldn't get thrown, and that's what happens here. It's a pretty good play in the game for us. Huge thanks to both Coach Skrowski and Coach Bateman for taking time to teach us the game plan. Zach, did you relive some high school days and moments? Did that look familiar to you? I tried to really live a little bit, but I think those receivers might have gotten open on if I was out there playing for Boston. Well, <laughs> let's go to guys that actually have a Division I scholarship exactly. right now and talk to them about the upcoming opponent for the Ball State Cardinals, and that is the Central Michigan Chippewas. For our player spotlight, Jordan Williams and Nick Miles, give us a preview on what the Chippewas may do Wednesday night at Schumann Stadium. have a cover for we I mean we're expecting them not to do the same thing they've been doing because they had a couple days to uh, adjust to what we're doing and had a couple days off so I mean really the game plan is to stick to what we're doing and just play ball running the ball obviously they, they like to run the ball so we got to do a job do a good job fitting the run correctly and uh, with, between the D line and the linebackers everybody coming up doing their job and just not trying to do too much because when people try to do too much that's when people gases for 50 and 60 yards when we do our job we're way better, way better defense you've heard all about it espn2 national tv well now it's time to hear from the gurus here to my left on who they believe is going to be the x factor and a reason why ball state may win the game wednesday night zach let's start with you who's your x factor all right guys hear me out on this one and bear with me a little bit but my x factor for this game on wednesday night is kyle schmidt the punter for the Cardinals. It's going to be a rainy and a, and a cold November night here in Muncie. I don't think the offense is going to get every first down they want to start the game. So if he's able to pin the Chippewas back like he's been able to do this whole this whole year and we play the field position game well in Ball State, has, sets up the defense well, I think 
Kyle Schmidt is going to be an important piece for, for this game on Wednesday. I, I can understand that. I can hear you out there. But I also think that you have to point out a weakness that Central Michigan has, and one of that is the offensive line. They're set, they've allowed the second most sacks in the Mid-American Conference at 24 this year. So, therefore, it's got to come through the X Factor up front. I'm going to say the outside in and Jonathan Newsom. He's got to be huge. Right now, he leads the team in sacks with seven – or he leads the team in sacks, which is also seventh in the Mid-American Conference at above three and a half. He's second on the team in tackles for loss. If he's big for Ball State coming around the end, being disruptive in the backfield, Ball State, I like their chances to win. I like where Tyler Bradfield's going this week. I'm going on the defensive line as well. The squad, they call him. Just heard for a moment ago, Nick Miles. He mentioned how Central Michigan wants to be that ground and pound. They want to run the football, and they've had a lot of big-time injuries over there uh, in Mount Pleasant, Michigan as well. But Nick Miles, four solo tackles against Akron, seven total on the day, including a one-and-a-half sacks on the day against Akron. He has been a huge force and understands Central Michigan's going to want to run the football with Lavalle and Shoemaker Gilmore. So it's going to be a big game Wednesday night at Schumann Stadium. Well, you know all about those X factors, and there's been so many great games at Schumann Stadium this year, and no doubt Central Michigan, that's going to be a great game as well. But that has a lot to do. It's, it's got a lot to live up to the billing as a big game a couple weeks ago at Schumann Stadium when Sigma Chi, the intramural football team, took home their third championship in four years. Want to talk about a dynasty? Well, they were led by quarterback, uh, what was his name? Zach Hughes, led by quarterback. So the oh quarterback my. guru here at Ball State, Rich Skrowski, he got his hands on Zach Hughes' film, and he has a couple of tips for Zach Hughes to improve his quarterback skills. Yo, let's go right now. Sigma Chi 18 about to kill this. Let's go. Hey, Zach, how you doing? Coach Skrowski here. Zach, I had a chance to watch the video that you sent me about you playing quarterback. Um, first thing is stick to communications. Uh, no, I'm just teasing. Zach, there were some good things to really watch on your film. And, and first and foremost, the best thing you do is you get rid of the ball pretty quickly. You know, you kind of keep it up high and you get rid of it. Couple things that I think maybe you can help you. Uh, first and foremost, you're not using your whole body. You're just using uh, your, your arm. And what I mean by that, Zach, is this. Uh, take Keith Winning, for instance. Keith uh, probably gets most of the velocity on his ball because he generates so much power from his midsection, his core. And the way he generates that power is by taking his left side and kind of torquing it through so that his right hip could get through. So the biggest thing I would work on with you, Zach, is this. Take your left elbow and try to keep it tight as you're releasing the ball and create a torquing action with your midsection. And if you create enough force, and they'll show the video later on, you'll literally lift your right foot off the ground as you throw. Similar to what maybe a pitcher would do, but without the, the enormous stride length. It's hard to tell on the, on the video what kind of grip you have, but it seems like the ball's coming out with a pretty good spiral. And then the thing that I'm so impressed with, you're such a competitive guy. So even in intramurals at Ball State, the football programs are pre pretty competitive. Keep working hard, Zach. Folks, we just don't <laughs> sit at the desk and just talk about football. Zach Hughes goes out and play, buddy. How about those How about those skills? Uh, you didn't show me that before this. This is like a shock to me, but th thanks for doing that for me, Luke, filming it, and, and thanks, Coach Skrowski, for the pointers. I'll, I'll have to implement those in, in the indoor league. Well, you might be on your way to a Division One scholarship if you keep working. I saw the highlights. You're winning. You're doing good. <laughs> winning, indeed. I think Keith winning. He's kind of feeling the pressure coming here to Central Michigan on Wednesday night. Primetime performance. And it's going to be a lot of fun. All right, let's get to it. Big time game, point blank. Who you got win the game and why Wednesday night, Zach? I got Ball State. I, I, I'm going to contradict myself a little bit. I don't think they're going to get off to a fast start, but I, I want them to so bad so the fans stay because it's Project 10,000. But I have Ball State 34 to 17 in this one. I agree with you. The fans need to stay with the Project 10,000. 10,000 students need to be there. That would be great for Ball State athletics. But the exact same time, my prediction, I'm with you. Ball State wins. Northern Illinois, they beat uh, Central Michigan 38-17. I'm going to say Ball State wins 38-14 over Central <laughs> Michigan. You know that old nursery rhyme, rain, rain, go, go away, come again another day? Well, hopefully that's the case Wednesday because there's supposed to be a lot of rain. It's supposed to be windy as well, which me and Tyler Bradfield were in Akron, Ohio. We had enough of that wind. But it should be an interesting game Wednesday night. It's the week before the big game. Everybody's looking forward to that Northern Illinois game. How do they pass this test? Because if you get through this, 
You can put all your attention on Northern Illinois. So I got Central Michigan, right? No, <laughs> I, I got Ball State. Ball State will win this game 38-17 and get a big win at home. Hopefully 10,000 students show up for Project 10,000. Also, just a whole, hopefully a lot of Cardinal fans go home happy. It, it, it's just so important that Ball State just takes care of business in this game because if they lose, then all this hype leading up to Northern Illinois goes away. So just take care of your business, stay focused, as Luke said, get the win, and then we can all talk about the game we really want to talk about. I agree. If you're a Ball State student, you've got to be at this football game. You need 10,000 uh, fans there. You know, ESPN2, national TV, why not come out to Schumann Stadium and root on the Ball State Cardinals? Root on the Ball State Cardinals, indeed. It's going to be a lot of fun Wednesday night at Schumann Stadium. Well, everybody, remember, Ball State Sports Link is on Twitter and Facebook. Be sure to give them a follow and a like. Just search Ball State Sports Link. For the folks that make us look good every week, yes. Alex Seitz, Drew Adamson do a phenomenal job. You saw the open the day. The lights will be on. So be out there as it is an opportunity for the Ball State Cardinals to shine, but also Cardinal Nation to shine and show what Ball State pride is all about. For everybody that takes part of the show, for Zach Cuse, Tyler Bradfield, I'm Luke Martin saying so long from Studio B. We'll talk to you next week.